Actually, the issue with Java was not so much that parts of it were not relevant. Problem is, uh, parts, like old parts of the language are stuck forever. You don't remove them because there is code that relies on them. And this is something that's completely relevant to Kotlin. If we want to remove something from the language, it's not going to be easy. But the thing is, we started removing things from the very beginning. So, so the problem is, a uh, new version of a language comes out, and uh, we want to add something. But what we want to add may conflict with uh, one of the previous features. Like, it just doesn't fit. Java has these problems right and left. The language is old. They have uh, many, many layers of design in it. So it's difficult to design something new for Java, even if uh, they know what they want to express. It's not easy to fit into how it's expressed in this particular language. And we talk a lot with the designers of Java. I know their problems. It's like, I know they're hard. <laughs> it's it, like Java is, is designed by very, very good people. They, they know their stuff very well. It's just very hard. And they're making very good progress recently. So um, we will be in a similar situation unless uh, we learn to evolve our language in this, uh, like migrating the ecosystem, basically. Uh, this is what we do now with small things. So uh, the tradition uh, among mainstream languages is that if you have a bug, you just keep it around forever. I mean, um, some bugs you, you fix. If, if, like, if you have a bug that, never, that makes something never work, then it's fine. Like, no users rely on this bug, that's OK. But if you have a bug that sometimes works in an unexpected way, then you're stuck with it forever because some users out there rely on it. And we know it for a fact. Like, every crazy bit of code you can think about is written out there. I was so surprised with things we get, we get reports about, but people actually write all the crazy code that exists. Like, everything. Absolutely. So, yes, if we have a bug um, like this, the code is out there and... Uh, Technically speaking, we'll break the experience of some user if we just uh, fix the bug. So what do we do? Uh, we do a long deprecation cycle. We, in one version, we detect the bug and tell the user, OK, here's a problem. It's going to break next time. And we give them like a year to fix this. And the next version, we actually break it. And if they complain, uh, we're just, we told you so. Mm -hmm. And it's been working so far. Uh, we only changed reasonably small things. It has been working, so we'll try to uh, keep doing this and keep the language motor. We have very uh, scary examples of how this went wrong with other languages, like Python is split multiple ways, because there, there is Python 2 and Python 3, and these are completely separate languages, separate, basically separate communities of people using it, and uh, like it's, it's, it's a total disaster to, to work in the Python ecosystem. So we're trying not to end up there. And hopefully, if we enter the state, we'll know early and we'll back off. So uh, the, like the short answer is, I hope we'll not end up uh, where other languages ended up. But if it's our fate, then so, so be it.